In the United States, NASCAR races are very important events. Fans watch each competition passionately and follow each day and circuit as if it were a matter of life or death. Watching only one of these speed spectacles is enough to be infected by the adrenaline and fervor they generate, although nothing compares to what happened in 1982 when one of the races turned into a paranormal scenario. Do you know the unprecedented story of L.W. Wright? If the answer is no, then get ready to discover one of the most impressive facts of the automotive world that continues to be one of the greatest mysteries of racing. 1982 did not go unnoticed for NASCAR. During those times, the economy was moving forward. People were looking for entertainment and fun, and the world of speed was ready to satisfy them all. For several years, NASCAR had piqued society's curiosity, and by 1982, no one wanted to miss the event that was about to happen. People all over Alabama were only talking about one thing, the Winston Cup Series, which would be held in the city of Talladega. It was the biggest race of the season, and there was a roster of the biggest names on the circuit. It included well-known racers such as Terry Labonte, Daryl Waltrip, Benny Parson, and the mysterious L.W. Wright, a complete stranger that no one had ever seen. Although no one knew who he was, Mr. Wright had an unusual but bulging track record. He had accumulated nearly 43 NASCAR appearances throughout the United States, and, according to the technical sheet, at the age of 33, he was already representing the Music City Racing Team, a very popular country music brand. At first glance, everything seemed to be in order and legitimate, especially the $115 payment given to NASCAR to obtain the racing license, plus another $100 registration fee. Of course, after the payment, no one doubted Mr. Wright, no one wondered why his name was unfamiliar, and no one cared about his presence. After all, in order to participate, racers only needed to have a sponsor, a technical team, and the right car, and that's exactly what Wright was counting on. So, the day of the competition arrived and Wright went there with a mechanical team, his Chevrolet Monte Carlo, and a strong desire to show everyone what he was capable of. However, his ambitions seemed to encounter many limitations. As was the tradition, the cars had to run a performance race. The score they earned in it determined the position in which they started at the finish line. Can you guess what number Wright got? Of course, it wasn't a very high one. He placed 36th even though there were 40 cars competing. That was a sign of what was coming, but neither NASCAR, its sponsors, nor its creditors had any idea of what was about to happen. The race started and the excited audience was screaming, fascinated by the roar of the engines, the danger of the track, and the speed of the vehicles. The drivers were going at over 180 kilometers per hour, and during the 13 laps, accidents were always present. One participant violently collided with one of the walls and lost consciousness, but fortunately, it was not right. After 13 laps, the winner was Daryl Waltrip, one of the favorites by all the bookmakers. Participation probably didn't make bettors lose money, but he had a long list of debts, and the $1,590 he received for coming in 39th place wasn't enough to pay them. However, from this point on, it all gets really mysterious. L.W. Wright disappeared from Alabama the next morning. Sponsors, his team of mechanics, the car salesman, and a host of additional creditors tried to locate him, but were unable to find him. He was gone. They spend about eight days trying to find some clue, some piece of information that would help them discover who this person was, but there was no possible way to find him. For this reason, Bernie Terrell, one of the big losers of that race, hired a private investigator who retraced Wright's steps during those weeks. The story went as follows. Immediately after signing up, Wright began a veritable crusade to get to the race in less than two weeks. No one knew it, but he had no car, no team of mechanics, not even a sponsor, he was on his own. Perhaps the only thing he had was a fondness for NASCAR, but without a dime to finance his crazy idea. So, with a certificate of participation in the competition, the first thing he did was to get a license for a group of mechanics that he had paid for with some inefficient checks to be cashed the day after the race. 
Again, no one doubted him. After all, they could find him whenever they wanted. Or at least, that's what they thought. Next, Wright met with the director and head of Space Age Marketing, Bernie Terrell. He needed a car and a trailer, and he knew that the man could get them for him. In return, he made a generous offer. According to Bernie himself, his words were snappy and almost effortlessly got him interested in him, although Wright never imagined his enthusiasm would be so great. Wright walked out of the company's offices with a $30,000 cash loan, a trailer, and an additional $7,500 for expenses. Now that was a good way to start the circuit, and he immediately invested $20,000 in a Chevrolet Monte Carlo, leaving a check as the remainder of the payment to be cashed after the race. From this point, the investigation follows Wright around Talladega. On his tour, he went shopping for parts, paint, food, fuel, tires, and a myriad of other purchases, which, of course, he mostly paid with checks. It is believed that the total amount of Wright's checks was $100,000. Maybe because of his way with words, or perhaps because of the manipulation he did using his credentials, his false NASCAR record, the newly purchased car, or the company of his team of mechanics, no one dared to doubt his word until they began to discover that the checks had no funds, and that the morning after the Winston Cup Series race, Wright had disappeared from the United States without anyone ever being able to find him. To this day, no one has been able to solve this case, and the man behind Wright's name has never been caught. No one knows what his intentions were, if he was just a scammer, or if he actually was a NASCAR enthusiast who was obsessed with fulfilling a wild dream. Still, no matter the reason, Wright managed to leave a mark on racing, a mark that is yet to be erased. Like this mystery, there are many other truly incredible stories that no one dares to believe, even if they are completely true. Would you like to know any of them? Then check out the following videos.